Hello everyone. Welcome back to my short video tutorials. First, I would like to thank all of you for subscribing my channel and also leave very encouraging comments for me. In my previous videos, I showed you how to integrate single cell RNA sequencing data from healthy human lung. One of you asked me to show you how to analyze the single cell RNA sequencing data from fibrotic lung. So today I'm going to show you how to integrate single cell RNA sequencing data from healthy human lung with fibrotic human lung. So if you have a look at my folder in the for the GSE 132771 data set, I downloaded three repeats a uh, single cell RNA sequencing data for healthy human lung tissue and also three repeats of single cell RNA sequencing data for human fibrotic lung. If we open one data set, you can see we have the compressed buckles, features, and the matrix. So now we can read the data into R use the read 10 times function in SURAT. So let's read healthy human lung single cell RNA sequencing data as control 1, control 2, and control 3. We read the fibrotic lung single cell RNA sequencing data as IPF1, IPF2, and IPF3. So you can see in this windows we have six large DGC matrix data for three repeats of control and three repeats of IPF9. So now we can convert them to SURAT object use create SURAT object function. So we keep genes that have expression at least in three cells and uh, uh, keep cells have minimum 200 gene expression. And also you can see here uh, we have the project name. This project name is important for us to compare control and the IPF lung following the integrated analysis. So let's convert uh, control 1 to a SURAT object. So you can see control 1 is a SURAT object now. So we can use the percentage feature set function to calculate the percentage of mitochondria uh, genes. So we can repeat both steps to create a SURAT object for control 2, control 3, IPF1, IPF2, and IPF3. So you can see now we have six SURAT object. So next we can filter out the low quality cells, we can use the varying plot to look at the features for each object for M features, RNA, N count, RNA, and the percentage of mitochondria genes. So you can see for control 1, Majority of cells, the N feature RNA is below 4,000, and the total count is below 20,000, and the percentage of mitochondria DNA is below 10%. So we can use the subset function to keep cells has N feature RNA below 4,000. Then count below 20,000 and the 
percentage of mitochondria DNA below 10%. So we will repeat this process for uh, the rest of the threat object. Now it's uh, control 2. We can have a look again. So you can see control 2. We can keep cells uh, have N feature RNA below 4000 and uh, total count below 10,000 and uh, mitochondria DNA uh, below 10%. So let's do the subset. Now it's a control 3. We can run the wiring function again. Uh, we will keep cells have N feature below 4000, N count RNA below 20,000, and 10% mitochondria genes. So we can run the same process for uh, IPF1, IPF2, and uh, IPF3 to filter out low quality cells or possible double knit. Now we can use the view function to have a look at the threat object. For example, control 1 and the IPF1. We have a look at the control 1 first. You can see it, we have the buckles, origin ID, N count and, and the total count M features and the percentage of mitochondria DNA. The important part I need to show you here is the origin ident. We named it as control. So the same for IPF, if you have a look, we have the origin ident as IPF here. Now we can create a list to contain three repeats of control and three repeats of IPF single cell RNA sequencing data. If we run this function, you can see we have a large list here with six elements. So we don't need uh, the control 1, control 2, control 3, IPF1, 2, 3 anymore. So we can remove those objects. So now you can see in this window, we only have control IPF list. We can connect the data, have a look, you can see here. So you can see we have a uh, uh, list for six uh, object. If we have a look at uh, each data, you can see we have the uh, C data, we have the metadata for control 1. We also have the project name control. So the rest uh, object will look the same as the control 1. So now we can go back to do the analysis. First we can run uh, data normalization and uh, find the variable features for six object in the list. So let's run this function. Because we are going to run um, data integration between control and the IPF long. So next we can select the integration features using this function for the data in control and IPF list. So you can see we selected uh, 2000 genes uh, for data integration. Then we can use uh, find the integration anchor function to find the anchors between each data set.
So at the moment, it is calculating the time. So you can see now it、uh, takes more than twelve minutes to find the integration anchors among six data sets. Okay, so at、uh, finished the running, you can see at the end it found eight thousand and four anchors. After filtering, it retained. Five thousand eight hundred and eighty-seven anchors. So now we can use the anchors to integrate six data set. So you can see through at first integrate five to four, then then five and four integrate into six. The next integrate two to three. Now it's three and two into six, five and four. So finally, the data set one into six, five, four, three, two. Okay, so it is done. Six data set was integrated into one. We named it as a control IPF combined. You can see in this window we have a object called control IPF combined. So now we need to set the integrated data as integrated to specify that we. We will perform downstream analysis on the integrated data set. Let's run. So after that, we can perform the, the standard workflow for、uh, visualization and cell clustering. First, we can scale the data. Then run PCA. Then run UMAP. Then we can find the neighbors and the clusters. I'm using the resolution zero point one for find the clusters to reduce the cluster numbers. Later, it is easier for me to name the clusters for the purpose of demonstration. So you can see with the resolution zero point one, we have fifteen clusters here. So let's use the plot to have a look at the、uh, cell clusters. We can zoom in. You can see we have uh fifteen cell clusters in the integrated data set. So we can also use the varying plot to see the、uh, m features, n count, and、uh, and the percentage of mitochondria DNA in each cluster. So you can see the information for m features, total count, and the percentage of mitochondria DNA in each cell cluster. So now let's use the view function to have a look at the metadata for the integrated data set. So you can see buckles, origin ID, n count, n features, mitochondria DNA percentage. We use the resolution of zero point one to find the cell clusters, and here are the. Through at cell clusters numbers, so important thing I need to show you here is、uh, the origin ID. You can see we have control for healthy can donors, and also we have IPF for the、uh, data set from IPF long. So now we can add、uh, more functions into the DIM plot. For example, we can group the Cell clusters by、uh, origin ID. 
Let's run this function. You will see. We can zoom in. You can see all the cells are well integrated between control and the IPF non data sets. We can also use uh, the split by function to see control and IPF cell clusters side by side. If we run this function, we can zoom in again. You can see on left hand side are cell clusters from control samples and uh, on the right hand side are cell clusters from IPF long samples. So we done the data integration. Now we can uh, use the feature plot to identify the cell clusters. Here are the markers for epicellular cells. If we run, we can get a feature plot for uh, the epicellular cells. You can see here are the uh, epicellular cells. We can run the feature plot using mark genes for endocellular cells to identify uh, endocellular cells. So let's uh, put the label on. So you can see, uh, cluster one and the twelve are endocellular cells. We can run the sim for for mesenchym cells. So you can see cluster five, six, uh, fourteen are mesenchym cells. So the rest that we know they are. Are uh, immune cells using the immune cells markers? You can see now, uh, PTP RC CD fifty two are uh, mark genes for immune cells. AIF one is a mark gene for macrophages. So through the feature plot. Using different mark genes, we identify the uh, cell clusters. So I'm analyzing single cell RNA sequencing data for the lung tissue. So I know well uh, those mark genes. When you analyze your own data, you need to find the best mark for your cell types. So now we can name the cell clusters. We can simply name them as epithelial cells, endocellular cells, mesenchymal cells, and the immune cells. So we can go back to have a look at the dim plot again. Now you can see we named the uh, four type of cells in the lung tissue, immune cells, mesenchymal cells, endothelial cells, and epithelial cells. So let's save the data. We can use this data set in my next tutorial. So please remember to subscribe my channel after you watch the, the video. So see you in my next video.